when an ICU family steps into the ICU, they're coming into a catastrophe and a, a moment in time that they will never forget. The most important part in really top-notch ICU care, the most humane ICU care, is to approach it from the point of view of a patient and family. When we as clinicians lose that perspective, everything else falls apart. I think that it's very important for them to make you feel like family and not just another number. But up here it just seems like so isolated. So my family's three hours away, so it's kind of hard. I didn't understand what was going on, but then I'd come to and I'd realize where I really was. I'd see doctor stuff, I'd see real things, and then all of a sudden I'd slip out of it again and weird things would appear. And it just was really creepy to me to not like that feeling at all. There's so many different players and trying to coordinate between all of these different people can be really challenging. The information that I have access to, even logging into the same electronic medical record, is not going to be the same information that my physician colleagues see. Sometimes I feel that they're on different pages. When you get somebody that comes in and tells you, oh no, this is what you have to do. When I just spoke with a doctor yesterday, they told me something completely different. The more complicated the patient situation is, and the sicker the patient is, there are more tasks that need to be done at the bedside, and simultaneously more things that need to be charted into the computer. If we have more integrated systems in place, we would be able to spend more time with our patients. We have the opportunity to really re-engineer the way we take care of patients in the ICU. We're trying to prevent a number of harms all at once. Instead of just attacking them one at a time, we're going to try to change the whole culture of the ICU. What we also have is some very exciting technology that's going to allow us to sort of be liberated from the computer and spend more time with the patients. At the same time, that technology is going to be looking for harms that might be occurring. And there's a companion technology piece, which will be a tablet computer that will be given to the patients and their families. And this is really the first time where the patients and families will, will take a really active role in their care. This is going to allow them to both inform us their goals and objectives in life and, and in their care, and also will allow us to really inform these patients and families about what's going on with their care. We're going to try to learn more about what patients' wishes are and make sure that we're providing care that's consistent with what they've expressed. The technology piece will be open source software. We want this platform to be accessible to any hospitals, regardless of, of where they're starting from. So by having an open source platform, we can let hospitals uh, and individuals innovate uh, on that platform to make it work in any setting. Not only is this the right thing to do for the patients, but there is in fact a financial incentive to do so. By implementing this platform, we will reduce costs in the ICU. If our patients aren't happy, it will cost us financially. And the way we make them happy is to provide better care, communicate with them, treat them with respect and dignity. It's incredibly satisfying to take these critically ill patients and see them recover. And this project is going to allow us to really take that uh, and expand it uh, in a way that no other project has ever done. It's not just a different computer system, it's a different way of caring for patients and families. It gives the opportunity 
for myself and my colleagues to provide the kind of patient care that we went into our professions to provide.